Hi everyone and welcome to the first video of Lesson 6, Level 2. We just got finished looking at five different options that The Zone is considering in order to finance their new shoe company, TZ Edge. The finance group is specifically interested in how the TZ Edge project will affect the cash flow of the parent company, The Zone. That is, the amount of money that's flowing into and out of the company each year. It's important to the zone in order to ensure that it has the funds needed for day-to-day -day operations. So in order to estimate the cash flow generated from the TZ Edge project, the finance group needs to combine the revenues and expenses associated with the manufacturing of the shoe with the necessary capital investment or the equipment purchases and financing for that project. Additionally, if the zone chooses to go with one of the three options that requires it to go into debt by borrowing money from one of the banks, the estimate must take into account the periodic payments that must be made to service the loan. Remember, we were going to have to pay $61,000 a quarter for it? Well, we have to take that into account somewhere, don't we? Additionally, the corporate tax code currently allows companies to allocate portions of the capital investment as an expense as well as deduct interest on the loan thereby reducing the amount of taxes that they owe. This estimate model has to handle those parts of the overall picture as well. This cash flow model needs to take into account the revenues, the cost of goods sold, the selling expense, and the operating income. All of these factors, and a few others that we'll calculate, need to be considered to determine whether enough we have enough evidence to support this project. Out of the five options previously discussed, the zone is leaning towards the first option, which was to take out a loan from Fido's bank. As you'll recall, the loan agreement stated that the quarterly payments of just over $61,000 would be made over a five-year duration. We'll be taking those payments into account when building and then analyzing our cash flow model. The figures that we have in our initial model were provided by our marketing group and represent predictions of where they envision the sales and manufacturing costs to be over the next five years. We'll use all of this information to establish the cash flow, but we'll also need to calculate the taxes and depreciation to complete the final picture. As discussed earlier, going with the loan option, this provides TZ Edge a few tax benefits that will need to be taken advantage of in order to provide the best possible financial outlook for the future. One of the benefits is that the current tax law allows for interest paid out on a loan to be expensed or deducted from the income of the company. By doing that, TZ Edge won't be taxed on that amount. Let's edit our model here to calculate the interest expense here in this cell. The interest expense is the portion of the payment that is not applied to the principal of the loan amount. This is the amount that the banks receive in return for loaning you the money and where they make their money to stay in business. This will change from year to year because, as you'll see in a minute, the amount of each payment that is applied to interest decreases with every payment, and the amount that goes to principal or paying off the loan amount increases with every payment. If we do this formula correctly in this cell range, this amount will decrease as we go through the five-year loan window. The standard method of showing the details of this principal and interest interaction is to set up what is called an amortization schedule or amortization table. This schedule lists for each specific loan period the remaining principal, the interest paid on that payment, and the amount applied to principal on that payment. In the loan sheet here, we've already constructed our amortization schedule and included the specifics of the loan from Fido's bank. As you can see, the original amount of the loan is $1 million. Here's the plan. We get the warhead and we hold the world ransom for one million dollars. <throat> With an APR or annual percentage rate of 8%. It has a duration of five years, compounded quarterly, or four times a year. The final or ending value of the loan is here in this cell and it's zero. If there was to be what is referred to as a balloon payment at the end of the loan, that value would be here instead of the zero. That means that for five years, we'll have 20 payments, and that's what we have in this first column down here on the left. 
In the remaining principal column, we're going to create a formula that shows us how much is left on the loan after each preceding payment. We'll start with $1 million up here and end up with a zero down here at the end. In the interest payment column, we're going to calculate the amount of this particular payment that's interest, and in this principal payment column, we're going to calculate the amount that is applied to the principal of the loan for that period. At the beginning of the loan, the interest payment's going to be higher, and it will decrease as we go down the schedule. We'll also see that the principal amount will start lower and slowly climb as we go down the schedule. This is known as an amortization schedule. The scheduler table will allow us to quickly look at each period and see what's being paid in interest and what's going towards principal or how much is actually going towards paying off the loan. As we've done before, I'm quickly going to enter the payment function into this cell so that we can tell what our quarterly payment is. To begin with, we also know what the starting value of what our remaining principal is going to be. That, of course, will just be the reference to our original loan amount of one million dollars. Yeah, Dr. Evil does it better than I do, sorry. Now to calculate the interest payment on that first payment shown here in this row as period one. How much of this $61,000 payment is going towards interest and how much is going towards principal? To calculate the interest payment, there is a very useful function called IPMT, or interest payment. It returns the interest payment for a given period for an investment based on periodic, constant payments, and a constant interest rate. This first argument will be the rate. We know that will be our 8% annual interest rate up here, divided by the number of periods in a year. These cells will need to be absolutely referenced so I'm going to hit the F4 key on each of them to put my dollar signs in the right place. The second argument is the period. For this cell's formula, this will be the cell here containing period 1. That will be a relative reference so we don't hit F4 since we're going to want that value to increment or increase as we drag our completed formula down in a minute. The third argument is the number of periods over the length of the loan. To get that, we need to multiply the loan duration in years and multiply that by the number of periods in a year. This is going to be an absolute reference, F4. The fourth argument will be the present value. That's going to be our $1 million. Sorry, no more Dr. Evil. Just this cell up here. Make it absolute. The fifth argument will be our future value which will be the ending value at the end of our loan up here in this cell. Make it absolute as well. Finally, a zero here to indicate that the payment is timed at the end of the period. Now we run this formula, we see that 20,000 of that 61,000 will go towards interest. That means the remaining amount will go towards the principal amount of the loan. To fill in the principal amount, you could do the lazy way, but not the best way of just subtracting the interest payment of that $20,000 from the quarterly payment, but let's do the right thing instead of just being lucky. Why don't we use the formula that Excel has been so kind to create for us to calculate the principal payment? PPMT, or Principal Payment Formula. That formula has the exact same arguments as the IPMT function that we used just a minute ago, so I want to save myself some time and effort. If I go into this interest payment formula and highlight all of the content between the two parentheses and then copy it into memory using control and the C, now the tricky part that a lot of students mess up on, hit the escape key to get out of this formula so we don't mess it up. Now that you're out, now I can start my PPMT formula here in this cell and then a parentheses, 
Now I'll paste my arguments that are hopefully still in memory by using the control V keys. Voila! Now close my parentheses and we should come out with the same answer as we had a minute ago using that simple subtraction formula and we do. Cool. That copy and pasting of the guts of a formula that I did a minute ago, it can be a bit tricky, but it also can save you a bit of time, and you know by now that I'm all over that. Now, going to the next row, what's the remaining principle going to be? We can just take the previous principal balance and add the previous principal payment. The reason that I'm adding it is because we already have a negative amount as indicated by these parentheses around that $41,000. Now I have the remaining principal balance. I can now drag down the interest payment formula one cell and the principal payment formula down one cell so that I have formulas all the way across the second payment. Now I can drag all three of these formulas at the same time down through the remaining 20 periods of the loan. As I mentioned before, the interest payment started off pretty high and slowly but surely decreased towards zero as we got towards the end of the loan. Conversely, the principal payment starts at around $41,000 and slowly climbs towards the payment amount, so here at the end of the loan, almost all of the payment is going towards principal. Looking at our last loan period, I see that we had 59957 remaining, and that just happens to be a value over here in the principal paid. Coincidence? I think not. If I copy this principal formula down just one more row, we see that we get to an ending balance of zero, so all is right with the world. Now we can see what's going to be applied to interest and what's going to be applied to the principal of the loan for each of these 20 periods. We'll look in further detail of these here at the next video. See you then. Go Knowles!